again, to zoom out, we've talked about this from a bunch of angles. Um, you know, engaging in deep study rather than just looking up the answers, um, something that you keep coming back to. Um, how would you articulate maybe the the fundamental or basic value of study? Comes down to the, the, the both from the from Deuteronomy, but also echoed in Jesus's words of what does it mean to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and I'll highlight mind and strength. Mm -hmm. And so we we have this charge, and I think it it is for the Lord gave us minds and challenging questions and problems for our own good, right? They're they're an actual good for us, right? The the scriptures in the sense, in a real theological sense, that it is the food for our souls, right? We need a, like when we study, when we meditate on the text and what God has said, there's a, you know, the truth of who he is and love for him is illuminated and grown. And, you know, we can, you can arrive at the same destination, right? Either you know, when in in study, you know, say you are are doing an app or a, a Bible reading plan on your an app on your phone, and you just decide to have it, you know, I'm gonna have it read through in my car at 10x the speed, right? Which you can do. You can set up in the app to do that, or I'm going to at at cost. It might cost me sleep. I'm gonna get up and open a paper Bible, and and work my way through each of the pages as I go. And there's a there's a difference. There's a true difference there. Right. If you, uh, I don't want to use a, then it doesn't, I don't mean it to be a silly analogy, but when you're, you're driving from Boston, where I live to Portland, Maine, which is a beautiful city, right? You can take the highway there and it goes pretty straight. It gets you, you know, it doesn't take very long. It takes an hour and a half or so to get there. Um, if you take the back roads, though, you actually get to know what the state of Maine is like, right? You like, you know, on the highway, you miss all of those things. And so I think in, with regard to deep study, you can get to the destination, but you you have missed the richness of what you could have, right? If, and I would I would ask the value question of like you, okay, so I got to the destination, you know, I didn't have the richness, that's fine. Uh, what is the cost versus value you've gained, right? You may have gained a little bit of time, a little bit of efficiency, but it but ultimately you got the answer and it it came up sort of empty, right? You you've you have shrewd opportunities to learn, to grow, to be enriched for the sake of speed, right? And, and I think as Christians, we're, we're called to resist that, right? The goal is not just to, you know, get through our lives as quickly and efficiently and painlessly as possible. It's to glorify the Lord who saved us, right? And so in, in doing that, we need to see him in his richness. And I, I, I have a hard time thinking that that comes in another way other than deep study and deep community and discipleship. Right, which cannot that's not oh, those are not things we can outsource they 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 are costly but they are good they grow our souls we um, i heard someone describe it recently that he was he's a this is a pastor who's a fan of deep study and he he said i i don't want to give deep study assignments in order to create people who have large minds and small souls he's like we actually want it to be both things large right we want large minds that are educated that gives us breadth of soul we want to you know know and love jesus as fully as we can in this life and so uh, until we meet him face to face right that's our so i guess that's one one charge for scriptural study but also in you know take it into a, a workplace context right when you're trying to learn a skill or a trade again i, I read another just a short article about um a, a computer scientist at google so you know well-known company but what made this individual contributor employee so special he was a high high ranking individual was that he could look at a at a problem or not even it wasn't even a known problem but his intuition would tell him something that something wasn't optimal it would it could be faster it could be um, more, less memory intensive and intuitively he could dig down into the weeds and in about two hours do what it would take a team of lesser trained engineers weeks to complete right and that is not something that that AI can replicate, right? Can, most computer scientists are like, I don't want AI to code for me, right? This is, and they're not worried about their jobs. They just don't like how well it does it. And so what is it that creates this engineer's intuition to solve a problem so effectively, or even in the carpentry or the, in the contracting trades, there's, there's cleverness and there's intuition and there's brilliance 
that is shown by some. You're like, how did you think to solve it that way? Right. And it and it was not by taking shortcuts and learning. It was by observation and mistake and recovery and resilience. And so that like if you want to if you want to be excellent at something, you you can't take shortcuts. You have to fail, you have to learn, you have to do the hard study uh, to be trained so your mind operates as a tool, right? I, I think that is, if I had to give a pitch for why uh, study is so important, um, and I wouldn't even say, you know, I think deep study is, a, is certainly a valid term, but um, mm -hmm. I think we as Christians, we, over, we, we may, overuse the, may overuse the term depth. You know, what does it mean to be deep versus shallow? I think the the charge is to engage and learn in things that that actually are a challenge to you that make your mind fatigued right that you're um you know you can't expect someone to to get up and run a marathon just by walking from the couch to the fridge every day right they have to go do things that are that are tiring they have to they have to learn and be trained and it's the same with our minds we we have to do things that are hard you know you have to go I love here at Sattler that they force all students to learn the original biblical languages. For many, that's hard. And for many in the American church, that's terribly intimidating. But like that's your your mind can be pushed in that way. It can be stretched, right? God gave us a written revelation that we're to interact with. And so, boy, it's um, sorry, you're going to get me going on this. I, <laughs> but I think doing yeah. the, the hard work of read and study, like, I think God God gave us that for a reason. We're meant to pursue him in those ways.